Alright, what's up guys? Uh, we're doing a quick tutorial on internal storage part 2. Uh, last tutorial we set up everything. Um, but what we're going to do in this tutorial is actually kind of talk through saving the data. It's going to be pretty quick and uh, not too much to do. Alright, first thing is we're going to set up two strings, file name and journal or journ. And uh, there we go. So this is going to be actually our string information from our edit text. So let's set up our save buttons on click listener. So we're going to say save and do set on click listener to this and implement on click listener. Nothing new so far, right? And so now we have that set up. We're going to set up our two new strings that we just created. So file name is going to be equal to our file name dot get text dot to string. Again, this shouldn't be anything new. We're just returning the information. Um, we might want to do an if statement real quickly because if they forget to have a file name, it might give us an error later. So we're going to say if file name dot contents equal. And that's just comparing two strings as well. So we're going to say if the contents equals pretty much nothing, we're going to have file name be equal to uh, untitled. Get it? All right, so so far once we click our save button, uh, it's going to create our file name string, and if that string is nothing, we're going to set it to be untitled, which is our our file name. All right. So next thing that we have to do is set up our journal entry. So we're going to say journ is equal to entry dot get text dot to string. Again, all this boring stuff, and if this has nothing, that doesn't really matter. Who cares, right? All right, uh, so now getting into saving the information. Uh, again, we're going to talk about saving internal storage. So, like, the user won't be able to access this information. It's correlated with our app, um, our specific app. So, if you uninstall the app, all this information gets deleted. Um, so, that's something to keep in mind because it's internal storage, it's kind of storing it on the device and within the app, the app itself. So. All right, the first thing that we need to do is we need to save this information. So we're outputting some information from our app to be saved. And now when you output information, you throw it in a river, and it takes it down the river and saves it somewhere. Um, but instead of calling it a river, it's actually a stream. It's not very powerful. It's just like a little trickling river, so a stream, right? So that's what we need to create first is a file output stream. Anytime you save some information, you're going to need a file output stream. We're just going to label this as FOS, and we're going to set this up to be open file output because, you know, essentially the river's not there yet until you like open up the earth or something, and then you get a river. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. So, anyways, you got to open up this file output stream, and we're going to say file out or Let's just do the quick command. Um, and you have two parameters, as you can see here. The first one is going to be your, uh, what is it, your file name. So what we're actually saving. So this is basically any time you, in a Word document, you hit save as, and then you type out what you want it to be saved as. That's what this first parameter is, is our file name. So if they typed out the, fi the specific file name they want to save it as, then it's going to save it to that. Otherwise, if they didn't type anything, it's going to be saved as untitled, and it's going to write over the untitled that was previously saved as well. All right, hopefully that makes sense. The next thing will be your mode. So we're going to say context, and we have so you have four modes. You have append, private, world readable, and world writable. Um, and I'm just going to talk about these last three here. Private is going to mean only your application is going to have access to this internal storage that we're saving. The user won't be able to browse through his files on his phone and find you know, this file name because it's going to be hidden completely. No one's going to have access to it, but our, act, act, uh, but our app itself can refer to this information, communicate with it, uh, save information privately. But no other apps or the user cannot uh, find this information by themselves. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, world readable. What that means is you can have two different applications uh, that can refer to the same information. So in our application, we have information that we can save 
you know, these journal entries, but the GUI doesn't look too, too good, you know, the user interface doesn't look too pretty. So let's say someone else across the world creates a different app and it's going to basically read whatever journal entries you have saved, but, you know, make it look a lot prettier, look a lot nicer. Um, that's what their application does. They're going to have to be able to read information from our application, so we're going to give them access to be able to read the information. We're going to let them be able to change those journal entries, but they can at least access it. So that's what writable or readable means. And writable means the same thing except that person across the world could also change or edit our journal entries. Um, so, you know, you probably don't want to have a writable unless if, you know, you have things planned out pretty well. But we're just going to stick with the private just so our activity or application can use this information and uh, you know set it up like that and the first thing you notice we get an error because we need to try and a catch so let's just do that real quickly surround with try and catch so if the file not found exception happens it's gonna give us an error and print that to the stack trace um, okay <clears throat> so now that we have our file output stream set up our river is starting to flow a little bit we need to throw some information into the stream or write some information on a piece of paper, put it in a bottle and throw it in the stream, right? So we're going to refer to our file output stream and we're going to say write and as you can see it writes bytes or information to the output stream and that's what we need to do. Alright, we need to write a number of bytes which is a byte array buffer here as you can see here um, and how you do that is we're going to refer to the string information that we're writing which will be our journ and we're just gonna say dot get bytes so that's gonna obviously as you see here it's gonna return a byte array which is what this parameter is looking for um, so just click that and uh, we have written some information to our file output stream and again we have to add a different clause to our try so we're gonna say that and it's our input output exception and again print to the stack trace if we get an error all right we threw our bottle in the river looks like it went downstream and you know ended up somewhere now I don't want anyone else to you know see this secret river I have so you gotta like throw some dirt back on the river and cover it up or close the river so we're gonna say FOS and say close and shabam we are done fellas I mean that's how easy it is to write information internally um, and again whatever mode you want to have that's probably the most important concept is your mode so you know hopefully everything made sense you know if not uh, leave me a comment and I'll try and make it in the next tutorial uh, so again thanks guys for watching subscribing following us on Twitter and Facebook you guys are freaking awesome and I'll catch you guys later have a good one